How's it going guys? This is Luke from Coffee House and today we have a special video. We're going to be comparing um, this fellow Ode grinder here to this Melkonig EK43. $3,000 coffee grinder championship showdown. Fellow should be shaking in their boots right now because its grandfather is sitting right next to him. Um, clearly there is some design language to be shared between the two, but what we're going to do is we're going to jump in here. We're going to compare kind of the fit and finish. We're going to compare the actual grind consistency. We're going to compare the build. We're going to compare just about everything about these grinders without getting too much into the actual burr set. That's a whole different combination of different metrics that we could talk about but really what we want to talk about is from an outside perspective looking in how are these going to compare and how are these going to stack up is this worth 10 percent of this or is this worth 10 times more than this guy so let's jump into it First off, we're going to jump into the fit and finish of these two grinders. Obviously they share a similar design language, but some things are a little bit different. Obviously starting from the top down, we do have plastic hoppers, both in plastic lids and the actual plastic hopper itself. Um, I think the fellow might edge out the Malcone on this. I kind of like this darkened plastic here. It seems like it's a little bit more substantial than this guy here. Obviously this lends itself to fingerprints as well, where this one does not. Uh, I do like that. However, this one is not removable, whereas the Malconig one, with some slight force, pops right out. And so this allows you an ease of cleaning not only with the hopper, but also uh, right inside of here and everything like that. So I like the idea of being able to get, have access to your burrs a lot closer than this, where you do have to take out some different screws and things for this one. Working our way down, we are met with a metal case on both of these, obviously, a little bit of a sound difference. Uh, this is kind of a thin stainless steel and it kind of, you know, lends, leaves some marks when you rub along it. But this um, is almost kind of like a cast iron feel to it. The coating on here is really robust. I mean, you could scratch this up, you could drop this and you're not gonna get a lot of damage on this guy. Uh, this seems a lot more robust, more robust than this guy. Uh, but obviously they're two different uses. On the front side of things, we have a metal grind selector here with a metal plate that clips into here onto plastic where your selector is met with. Uh, on this one, we actually have a plastic uh, grind select with a plastic face, but all of this front actual plate is metal. So in terms of this, I kind of like the feel of the plastic. This feels a little bit more, you know, cold surgical-esque, whereas this one feels a bit more refined overall. I would rather have the body be plastic than just the actual touch point right here. However, talking about touch points, I do find great value in being able to have the buttons feel really nice. And this one being a plastic does have a nice kind of feel and a click to it, but it's nowhere near as substantial as these guys here. I mean, you can just, you can immediately hear as that thing kicks on, this has some horsepower. This thing is ready to grind whatever you throw at it, coffee or not. Um, and you can hear it winding down there. You're not gonna obviously hear a lot of those things in this one because this is you know, a home unit. This is something made for a production facility or a high volume cafe where they're gonna be actually pumping out a lot of coffee. So jumping into the ergonomics a little bit, I think this is important because this is something that a lot of these two grinders share. Uh, you have the front mounted grind selector here that is the exact same way. However, this one goes to the right to decrease the grind size and this one goes to the left to decrease the grind size. Not a huge deal, obviously. Some things that you actually will see in terms of design language is this little guy right here. And that's to knock out any grounds that have been sitting inside of the burr set or up in the actual chute itself. Um, this one actually is functional where it's kind of, you can see it, there's a, some springs on these screws that runs into contact with this little foam plate and really knocks anything out here. This one actually though, in our experience, doesn't really do all that much, which is unfortunate because this is already a pretty messy grinder. So that might add a little bit to the mess when you're moving it around and stuff and those grinds will get shaken out of here. 
Aside from the ergonomics of the actual use features in terms of the grind selector and the actual knock, everything else is pretty similar. You know, obviously this comes with a little dispenser here where this one obviously is not. Um, this is not really situated for the home where this one is. So while they do same, share a lot of design language, uh, the ergonomics are in a different class of their own because these are two completely different grinders. But what we want to talk about is how they line up in terms of the grind taste, and that's what we're going to jump into next. So now we jump into the grind time. We're going to see how fast these grinders are and how they compare. And so how we're going to do that is I have Felix here, who's going to be on charge of the actual fellow ode, and I'm going to be here on the Malconig, and we have 250 grams of Finca La Cuchinales Guatemalan coffee, and we're gonna pour those in and see how they run. So what I think we'll do is we'll do them at the same time and we can compare the two. So let's uh, go ahead and do it. That's nice. Ooh. Sounds like it almost died there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so clearly we have uh, a little bit of a mess going on with this fellow Ode. Um, obviously, it's a little tough to get things in there. So if this was something you had in a cafe, there's just no way it's going to work. You'd be constantly swapping it out and everything like that. And you look over here at the, uh, the Malconig, and even though I ground this at a 1, which is suited for espresso, um, it was clearly much, much faster. Um, you can see quite a bit of... Um, of chaff left on there. And obviously there's gonna be quite a little bit on here, but nowhere near as much, even though we were grinding it much, much finer. That being said, after we, uh, after we clean this mess up here, we're gonna jump a little bit more into the taste of the two. We're gonna compare some actual brewed coffee between them. So the uninitiated, let me introduce you to the Kruv Sifter. This sifter is going to be a key player in comparing these two grinders in terms of grind consistency. What we're looking for is we want to be able to compare these two in terms of how many grounds that they're making within our actual range of usability. That meaning there's not too many farly coarse pieces and there's not too many fine pieces in here. So what I've done is I've set this Kruv sifter to 1000 micrograms and 500 micrograms and what this is going to do is it's going to give us a great idea into how much coffee is actually going to fall within our realm of usability in terms of a pour over so anything smaller than 500 is going to be left in the basin here and anything larger than a thousand is going to be left right here and so in our testing we've determined that a three on this on the actual front plate is going to be pretty similar to about a seven on this um, this one is suited for espresso as well where this one is not this is strictly brew grind so what i'm going to do is i'm going to weigh out 25 grams of each of or of the same coffee here uh, for each of the grinder and we're going to go ahead and give this a little shake and then we're going to weigh out and compare the differences <laughs> guys up in the crew of sifter and getting everything situated um, we have some final results what I did is I ground this at a 3 on here and a 7 on here 
in which we have determined kind of this is the right grind size for a brew, and these are very similar grind sizes. So here I have the, er, the amount of between 500 and 1,000 micrograms for the fellow ode, and here I have the EK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh and compare these, and I haven't weighed them yet actually. So I teared an empty glass here, and we're going to see how it goes. So out of 25 grams of coffee ground, we are left with 8.8 .8 grams in between the actual parameters here, which means, um, and you know, in my, in my experience with this, we had a lot more coarse grounds. And even though I went and turned this up to be a little finer, we were still getting a lot of large coarse pieces, um, which has to do with those, those non-locking burrs in there. This one, uh, the EK right here, we were left with far, far less coarse pieces and we're going to weigh out what we do have here. This is 11 on the dot, so almost three grams more in terms of in between these two right here, which, I mean, three grams is a lot um, when you're talking about 25 grams. That's, what, 12% yield, higher yield, which is amazing. Um, I mean, very, very different. We had many more fines as well in the fellow ode than we did in the actual EK. Um, and that's, I think that's really interesting, and that says something a lot about this, because this one actually does grind for espresso as well. As you can see, I've shifted into stealth mode here where the uh, staff has switched around these cups and I actually don't know which one is which, whether if it's from the EK or the Ode, but now that it's switched, we can try some coffee. Um, just judging from the actual uh, you know, visual perspective here, uh, they're the same level obviously, because we didn't want you know, one to be any closer. And then we also brewed them at the same time. You, know, you can see in the videos that we have both of them, but um, so they're the same temperature as well. Uh, nothing's going to throw me off in either way. But um, just from a visual perspective, the one on the right looks just a hair lighter, just a tiniest bit more orange than the one on the left here. But without further ado, let's go ahead and try both of them and compare. So this one has a really nice, pleasant, velvety body, but it doesn't feel like it's over-extracted or muddy or anything like that. It has a clean finish to it and a really nice kind of like amber caramel note, um, which is reminiscent of the coffee that we brewed, which was the Guatemalan coffee. This one here. So this one here on the right um, has, a, has a much different body to it, a lot lighter of a body, uh, but not as crisp also. Um, there's, there's a lot more of kind of like this one definitely was a little bit more uneven in terms of an extraction, so I'm already going to attribute this one to the Ode um, and this one to the EK. Uh, this one right here has, is lacking in mouthfeel. Obviously still has good flavor, but I think a lot of the, the more important mouthfeel and the more important notes were a bit washed out from the large random coarse grinds, where this one here has a much greater mouthfeel and a really overall pleasant aroma, pleasant body, pleasant feel overall. Um, the profile of that coffee is more transparent and true to the actual origin of the coffee, whereas this one on the right seems a bit lacking in its characteristics. Uh, that being said, they don't even need to tell me that these two are the, uh, are the benefactors of these two grinders. This one is clearly from the EK and this one is clearly from the Ode. Uh, that being said, all in all, I would gladly drink this coffee over and over again. If I were to have a suggestion for the Ode, it would be to go even finer. I mean, even when we're grinding at one, we're still getting a lot of these lacking characteristics, unfortunately, from the inconsistencies of the grinder. Is this grinder anywhere near as good as this grinder? No. Is it 10% as good? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but does this stack up to other $300 grinders? We will compare that in another video in the near future. But, you know, 
But what I wanted to do is really compare these two grinders and show you the stark contrasts between what you get when you pay for 10 times the grinder and you pay 10 times the price. Uh, that being said, I will be gladly sticking with this coffee um, for after this episode. And I wanted to thank you guys for tuning in and watching. Um, obviously, this is a little bit of an in-depth comparison. And it's compl two completely different grinders. But I want to be able to show you what you get when you pay for a cafe quality high volume grinder versus a home grinder here, even though they have the same look to them. That being said, thanks again for watching. I'm Luke from Coffee House. Please subscribe, tune into the, uh, the Facebook group and all those good things. We love having you and we love talking coffee. Uh, yeah, thanks.